Hello everyone, thank you for joining with us today. I am David and I am here with Sahid. We are representatives of Site Alpha and today we will be discussing Unit 2, Sleep and Hypnosis. Every day, if you sleep at, for example, a specific time, such as 9.30 p.m. and wake up at 7, well then your body naturally begins to release the hormone to make you sleep at 9.30. However, even if it's for a single day that you don't sleep at 9.30 and go to sleep at around, let's say, 12 a.m., your brain will assume that you're in danger, that something went wrong, which is why you are sleeping at your normal time. Therefore, it won't allow you to get quality sleep, and will try to make you sleep less to ensure that you're safe, sound, and secure. This is why sleep regulation is so important for our well-being. What explains why our body functions like this are primarily due to two internal biological mechanisms, homeostasis and circadian rhythm. Let's first discuss homeostasis. Something you guys might have already learned or known from school. From your science classes, you may understand that homeostasis is the ability to maintain internal stability in an organism despite the persistent environmental changes that surround us. Next, we'll discuss circadian rhythm, a concept you probably haven't heard of. Circadian rhythm is essentially a 24 hour clock that directs a wide variety of functions from daily fluctuations in wakefulness to body temperature, metabolism, and the release of hormones. By this logic, we tend to natu be naturally sleepy during the day and extremely tired in the evenings. Specifically, according to Sleep Foundation, we naturally feel tired at two different times of the day, about 2 a.m. and 2 p.m. It is this natural dip in alertness that is primarily responsible for this post-lunch nap. Why do we need sleep? Now, you clearly know that doctors recommend about 8 hours of sleep a day, yet so many people simply just don't do that. Let's look at some examples of this. Tom Ford, a fashion designer and director, sleeps only 3 hours a night. Simon Cowell, a musical entrepreneur who's made a tremendous impact on the music industry, states, I want to be able to get hold of someone on holiday around 3 a.m. if there's something I need. The same goes for me. Barack Obama, the former U.S. president, only sleeps about 4 to 5 hours a night. And Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla and SpaceX, says, If other people are putting in 40-hour work weeks and you're putting in 100-hour work weeks, then even if you're doing the same thing, you know that you will achieve in four months what it takes them an entire year to achieve. So clearly, many successful people don't actually sleep 8 hours a day. While getting the necessary amount of sleep is dependent on personal preference, there are five reasons as to why sleep is significant. The first is protection. From an evolutionary perspective, sleeping during the night could prevent us from going outside late in the dark where accidents and bad things could happen. Recuperation. When sleeping, our brain tissue is restoring and repairing itself. Our resting neurons have time to repair themselves while pruning or weakening unused connections. Sleep also helps consolidate our memories and strengthens and or stabilizes neural memory traces. To illustrate, research has shown that those who study before sleeping or napping have higher memory recall or higher activity in the hippocampus, the part of the brain that forms new memories. Creative thinking. Sleeping boosts our thinking and learning to help us with problem solving, and a well-rested mind and body can allow better mental flow and better idea creation. The pituitary gland secrete growth hormones during deep sleep, which allows an individual to grow big and strong. The reason behind this is primarily due to the human growth hormone, or HGH, which is responsible for the overall growth of the body. It is during the time of deep sleep where this hormone reaches its peak. Sleep is defined as the periodic, natural, and reversible loss of consciousness. Every time we sleep, we go through the sleep cycle, which contains only four stages and lasts 90 minutes. A fun fact is that sleep talking can occur at any of these four stages. So what are these stages of sleep? Well, let us begin with the no stage, where the individual is still awake but drowsy. It is here where alpha waves, slow brain waves of relaxed awakened states, are evident. Non-REM1 or NREM stage 1 occurs for up to 5 minutes. In this stage, we, people will usually experience slow breathing, regular brain waves, hallucinations, which are false sensory experiences in the absence of any actual stimulus, hypnagogic sensations, which is basically a sense of falling or floating that you may feel 
which can later be incorporated into your dreams. When you're in this stage, you can be woken up quite easily without too much difficulty. Next is stage two, or any arm two, which occurs up to 20 minutes. During this phase, sleep spindles appear, which are little bursts of rapid rhythmic brainwave activity. When in this stage, you can be woken up without too much difficulty. Psychologists and scientists have now combined stages three and four into stage three, or NREM three. This stage tends to occur for the longest for up to 30 minutes. Here, delta waves are evident, which are very large and very slow. These waves are depicted as sort of slowing down in comparison to other waves from the different stages. This is a stage of deep sleep where the individual is hard to wake up from. Furthermore, sleepwalking and night terrors also occur in this stage. Lastly is the REM stage, which is also approximately 30 minutes. This is usually the last stage you're in before you wake up. REM stands for rapid eye movement. In this stage where you dream, your heart rate tends to rise, you're breathing faster and more irregularly, and your eyes are darting quickly every 30 seconds or so. Furthermore, the motor cortex in, the, in your body is very active, but the brainstem is blocking the message so your body and muscles are relaxed. There may be some twitching as your brain is very active. You, you feel like you're doing all these things, but your body is not actually acting. Hypnosis is a social interaction in which one person responds to another's suggestions that certain feelings, perceptions, thoughts, or behaviors spontaneously occur. The main difference between stage hypnotism, which is the hypnosis that occurs in Hollywood movies, and real life is that people under hypnosis are much more willing to do what is suggested. For example, a repulsion from your drug of choice is a common tactic where a hypnotherapist works to create a feeling of loading or disgust whenever the drug is mentioned or present. Therefore, a hypnotherapist can essentially make someone who loves coffee into a coffee hater. The key takeaway here is that hypnosis can't force people to act against their will. It can simply and merely only suggest. Even though hypnosis is a phenomenon that has been established and researched thoroughly for quite a while, it still cannot be adequately explained why it works by scientists and psychologists. However, it can be narrowed down to two important theories. The first one is the social phenomena or social influence theory. According to this theory, hypnosis is not an altered consciousness, but rather an extension of normal consciousness acting as expected in the social situation of hypnosis. Essentially, hypnosis is a result of external social variables. Advocates of the social influence theory of hypnosis would suggest that hypnotized subjects are people just caught up in role playing, playing the role of a hypnotic subject for the hypno hypnotist. Divided consciousness, as developed by Ernest Hilgard, explains why some subjects carry out behaviors on cue, though no one may be watching, and why distinctive brain activity accompanies hypnosis. The basis of this theory is based upon dissociation, a split in consciousness which allows some thoughts and behaviors to occur simultaneously with others. Examples including when we doodle while listening or when we focus on something else besides pain, we feel in a workout or practice. Essentially, we can block our attention to sensory input, but not the sensory input itself. Think about your group of friends. Try to at least include yourself and six others. According to numerous sources, at least one individual from your group can be easily hypnotized. Hypnosis cannot affect everyone. In fact, approximately only 15% of the world's population can be easily hypnotized. New research from the Stanford University School of Medicine has discovered that the brain structure of such people differs from those who cannot easily be hypnotized. Furthermore, according to Time magazine, people who are more easily hypnotized tend to be more trusting of others, more intuitive, and more likely to get so caught up in a good movie or play that they forget they're watching one. To test if you are susceptible to hypnosis, you can do a simple test called the eyeball roll. We have also provided a resource from YouTube that demonstrates the eyeball roll test. We have also posted this link in the description of this video so you can view it in your free leisure.